brother! Ben, of all the classes at Hogwarts, I think the one that makes the least amount of sense to me is astronomy. Like, couldn't we as muggles take this class and just go outside and learn all the names of the stars and stuff? Is it even magical at all? Why do magical kids need to know about space? <laughs> Even when I first learned about potions, my initial reaction was, aren't they just mixing stuff up together? Couldn't muggles conceivably do this as well? Alas, they cannot. Basically, almost by definition, making potions in the wizard sense also involves a little bit of wand work at the very least. All muggles could really do was make really gross soup, which in my own personal experience is exactly what happens. And let me tell you, tracking on that boom sling skin wasn't easy. But as far as I can tell, there's nothing magical about space, or at least no practical magic they can practice by studying it. Even the OWL exam they have for this is just filling in a star chart. Like, that's the whole thing. Are you kidding me? It's a mandatory class for five years, and all they have to do is fill in a chart. Like, how are the telescopes even helping? Doesn't this just mean there's blank spots on a paper? How is looking at them helping? It's not like they're moving around up there. Unless maybe they do think the stars are moving, and but no, because then in that case, the Earth wouldn't be moving or even rotating. We just have a fixed position, so I don't think that's it. But either way, doesn't filling in star charts just seem like year one stuff? Possibly not. In year one, we see Harry studying a map of Jupiter, and then in year five, he is only just then learning Jupiter's moon, so maybe astronomy work is just like really slow in the wizarding world. But again, how is this helpful in any magical sense? How is this making you a good wizard? <laughs> Look at this guy calls himself a wizard. He can't even name all of Jupiter's moons. <laughs> He's practically a muggle. But the only other time we see them putting the locations of the stars or anything to use is in divination class, which is a whole other class that the rest of the staff just basically seems to think is a total waste of time. Literally the only reason Dumbledore Dumbledore even still allows the class to be taught is as a facade so he can protect Professor Chalani because she's the one who made the prophecy, which again, had nothing to do with the stars. It seems weird how often Dumbledore is willing to sacrifice a quality education for some alternative agenda. Like, he hires Slughorn literally just so he can figure out where the Horcruxes are, and he hires Lockhart literally just... Why does he hire Lockhart? I didn't get rid of the band and Banshee by smiling at them. <laughs> On the other hand, or hoof, the centaurs, no, you know what, they do have hands. The centaurs in the Forbidden Forest are constantly stargazing and claiming they're making predictions of the future based on the movements of the planets. Which first, can you imagine how their heads would just like pff, explode if they ever saw any modern software that just shows you where the planets are gonna be? But two, and more importantly, even after all of their boasting, it's still for nothing. Ferenzi, who eventually takes up the divination post on his first day, teaches the class that the stars don't really care about the mundane happenings of humans and stuff. It's more big picture things. So basically everything you've learned for the first four years, total waste of time even more than it already was. But then hot off the hooves of that perfectly rational sounding statement, actually he informs them that it can take years to be sure of what the planets are telling you and even then it's probably not a good idea to put too much stock in it. <sighs> I mean, if it takes you years to predict the future, are you really predicting the future? Because by the time you have your answer, you're just in the future. Right? But you can just hear Bane bragging to the other centaurs like, huh, remember back in the Sorcerer's Stone when I was all like, huh, Mars sure is bright tonight indicating a possible coming war? <laughs> I called it. Yeah, Bane. And as long as a war ever happened ever again ever, you also would have called it. And also, that very same night in the forest, actual Voldemort was there. So maybe next time, Keep your eyes on the ground and you won't have to wait several years to figure out whether or not you were right. Ah, Ma, sure is bright tonight. Looks like the Dark Lord might be returning. Yeah, oh, you sure? Cause he's like right there. Look, over, stop. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but personally, like if my kid was going to Hogwarts, well, first of all, I'd be insanely excited. Like, Luke, you're a wizard. I'm so proud of you. But I would like to set up a meeting with the Dean because it seems like a couple of the classes are kind of pointless. One of them is mandatory and is apparently only maybe worthwhile if you take the other one, which is an elective. Okay, how about this for an explanation? Maybe the reason they teach the class is to help wizard families continue to come up with non-muggle sounding names. Right? Hmm? It's all about 
perpetuating the culture. Lots of people in the wizarding world end up being named after constellations and or celestial bodies. Luna, for example, literally means moon. And then there's that mysterious girl in Harry's year with the last name of Moon. Yes, that's a real character. Look right here. Boom. Ha. Never heard from again. In fact, if you go on Pottermore, there actually were things called name seers who parents would go to to learn about the potential future of their child and then name their kids accordingly. Basically, all of the blacks are named after stars or constellations. Sirius is named after the brightest star in the sky, also known as the Dog Star, which is fittingly part of the constellation Canis Major. Just my personal opinion here, but if they taught, I don't know, etymology at the school instead of divination, it seems to me they could have figured out the whole Sirius is a dog thing, like, way sooner. And as fitting as it is, I'm gonna point out that his name is not the result of a name seer. All of the blacks are just named after stars and stuff. His brother Regulus is kind of his opposite, so he is named for the brightest star are in the Leo constellation, so the cat star. Get it? Dog, cat, eh. Bellatrix means female warrior and is part of the Orion constellation. Also, there's an Orion black. And her sister Andromeda is named after the Andromeda galaxy. And the list goes on. Draco is named after the Draco constellation. Voldemort's mother, Merope, is part of the Taurus constellation. And I think that's all. I'm sure there's a few more lesser known black family members. Oh. Oh my god. Guys, I am not kidding. This guy is not named after Star, but he definitely has to do with astronomy. On the train ride to Hogwarts in their first year, Ron tells Harry he is missing two chocolate frog cards, an Agrippa and a Tolmy. <laughs> Oh, wait, you know what? That doesn't make sense yet because I haven't explained why it's relevant. Hold on. Ptolemy, if you don't know, was a Greek astronomer who, in the world of Harry Potter, was apparently also a wizard, but who was most famous for, and wait for it, because this time it's definitely going to blow your mind, an Earth-centric model of the universe. <laughs> I swear, I was kidding at the beginning of the video, but I'm starting to think it's an actual thing that wizards think Earth is the center of the universe. Kind of a massive oversight in a subject that's mandatory for five years. Actually, one of the things I'm kind of surprised never ended up being more of a thing in Harry Potter is astrology, which is to say zodiac signs and stuff. I guess you could say that's sort of what the centaurs are doing, but they do it way differently than how we as muggles know it. And Trelawney does teach it, but the very fact that she teaches it kind of gives it a giant discount button, if you ask me. And yet, as we know it, you know, just as horoscopes and stuff, it ends up working really well. Like, for example, Harry is a Leo. Leos are described as being bold, intelligent, courageous, and warm, and of course their sign is a lion, which matches in very nicely with Gryffindor. Hermione and Umbridge would both be Virgos, and while I hate comparing them at all because they are definitely on opposite ends of the spectrum, Virgos are described as being incredibly attentive to detail, which seems to fit here. Voldemort would be a Capricorn, which is represented by the Goat of Fear, which means they often deal in secrecy, and while they would never run from a fight, are often more afraid of their inner demons. In Voldemort's case, death. Maybe it's so surprising to me that it's a mandatory subject because of all the things wizards study, it's not very magical, and it doesn't seem like they know that much about space. When Harry and the gang make their way to the Department of Mysteries in Order of the Phoenix, they discover that the unspeakables within study all sorts of strange things like thought, space, time, love, and death. And a few other things we don't get to see, but can I make a few guesses at soul, reality, and power? God, have you guys seen Infinity War yet? It is so good! But anyway, on all of those subjects, the book manages to go into at least some detail about them, except space, which doesn't even have its own subpage on the Harry Potter wiki. Seriously, I just think Hogwarts and the Ministry should be consulting with each other more about the course catalog. The one they know the least about is a mandatory class? Hmm, we have a literal hall of prophecy. Should we teach the students about that? Nah, let's just make it an elective we don't even think should exist. Hmm, and what about love, the thing that won the last two wizarding wars and is so powerful that we keep the door locked every time? Should the students have at least a basic understanding of that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I hear what you're saying, but I all I already printed the syllabuses and ink is so expensive these days and I put telescopes on there so maybe they can find love with those. And Ben, there you go. That's everything we know about wizards and their relationship with space, at least so far. Personally, I would love to see a story about space wizards or maybe they get to visit pig farts. It's on Mars. 
you need a rocket ship. But Ben, my question for you and everybody else is, what do you think? Why do wizards study astronomy? Why is it important to their magical education? Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing! Guys, thanks for watching. As always, please remember to like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you want to see another unusual course subject explained, you can check out this video right here to have arithmancy explained. Or, hey, did you guys know we have a gaming channel? Super Carlin Gaming, it's fun. We do a lot of live streaming and play a lot of Mario Kart. If you want to check that out, you can click right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.